Thank you very much for having me here, and I hope people are not yet sleepy. So just to make sure, we'll do another exercise. Can I have everyone raising your left hands? And now both hands, and stay there for a second, I promise my mom. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, guys. So thanks so much for having me here. It's amazing. Iceland, Reykjavik, it's beautiful. And it's also quite awesome to be surrounded by so many JavaScript enthusiasts eager to learn and share their experiences. Uh, for the next half an hour, hopefully less, I'll be quick to not uh, keep you longer here. I'll be talking to you about a topic I'm very passionate about speech recognition. And most excitingly of all, I'll show you how you can empower web applications with voice-triggered interactions. First off, uh, let me just tell you a bit about myself. One second. So I work for a sports technology company called Huddle, uh, which builds an analytics tools for coaches and athletes at all level to help them win. And second. Have a technical difficulty here. Just my, it always happens, speaker notes going odd. So going back, I want to tell you a short story. So I've been playing around with speech recognition for about four years when I was studying it for my master's degree. And I was quite intrigued by how hard of a problem this is. Uh, just imagine all the various factors, like accent, pronunciation, articulation, roughness, nasality, pitch, volume, and speed that influences how it performs. In practice, speech looks a lot like this. It's a continuous sound wave whose amplitude varies based on the sounds involved. The speech recognition process typically goes through the following steps. First, it splits the sound wave by silences into what are called utterances. It's basically words or other non-linguistic sounds. Then each utterance is split, split in frames, and for each frame we have something that's called a feature vector, which is basically a set of number representing distinguishable properties of that sound. And once we have all these things, we employ a classifier that takes a series of models to identify and do the matching process based on those properties and figure out what the speech is about. So just a quick brief overview. We have an acoustic model that contains acoustic properties for distinct units of sound, a phonetic dictionary with maps the words to their respective phonemes, as they're called, these units of sounds that constitute words, and the language model that allows to make the search space easier based on already recognized words to be able to find the relevant ones based on probability quicker. And the speech, if you wondered, is actually hello world. Uh, just in case you're wondering, in practice, speech recognizers are assessed based on two things, accuracy and speed. For accuracy, it's the word error rate, which looks at the ratio between the insertions, substitutions, and deletions over the total number of words in the reference speech. And you can see quickly in an example there what that means. And speed, is the real-time factor, the decoding time over the speech time. So now, just to make sure I didn't lose you, can we do that exercise again? So everyone, left hand, quickly, right hand. 
and wave a bit. Awesome, perfect. So let's see some use cases. So probably a lot of you are familiar and you might already use personal assistant apps like Siri. And in practice, speech recognition engines, like the one that powers Empower Siri, are of two types. The ones that are speaker independent, so basically regardless of the speaker, so all the things like pronunciation, accent, they don't matter, they're supposed to recognize their speech, and speaker dependent, which basically it involves an extra training step for a particular speaker where they need to read some predefined templates, sentences, to fine tune the recognition process and increase the accuracy. And just to continue on with my story earlier, towards the end of my studies, I had a great opportunity to put in practice what I learned about speech recognition in the research team at Mozilla. And the project was to build a speech recognition engine for Firefox OS. And for those of you who are not familiar with Firefox OS, that's the mobile operating system that Mozilla built and they're heavily developing it that's based on web technologies. So being a research project, the fo focus was more on exploring what's even possible in terms of speech recognition on the web, mainly using JavaScript, rather than having something solid, solid production ready. So during my time there, I've built a pure JavaScript speech recognizer that performs the speech recognition process on the client without the need of any cloud-based solution that where you just send the speech and it, you get the results back. And I would show you a quick demo of that. Feel free to ignore all the details there. They're not really relevant for the scope of this talk. So the idea is, I'll show you an example for recognizing digits, um, which is made possible given for digits, the models, the language model, phonetic um, dictionary and acoustic model are quite small and can be easily loaded on the client. So let's try out some numbers. Three, two, one. Here you go. And it, as you can see in the console, it basically shows you the result. It also shows it on the page. And some performance. I was talking about real-time factor. Here you can see 0 0.082. Basically, a real factor of 1 means the decoding happens in real time. It takes the same time as it took for the speech. And for this example, you also see three different solutions, which are one different than the other. That's basically in the process of recognizing speech, it takes different probabilities and you see some various scores there which might not make much sense, but it ranks the possible outcomes. And in this case, as I chose here, the what's called N best hypothesis, I chose three, so I got the top three. Awesome. Going back to the, this project that I built, if you're interested to know how it works and all these kind of details, feel free to find me after this talk or ping me on Twitter or the JSConf Slack. And little did I know, around the same time I was researching this and building that speech recognizer at Mozilla, a team for, from Google were writing up a spec for what they call the web speech APIs. Basically, defining JavaScript APIs that would allow developers to incorporate speech recognition into their web pages. And about a year later, in 2013, these were supported experimentally in Chrome version 25. And these were building up on top of a feature that Chrome released from version 11, which was to have speech input with this attribute called X WebKit speech for input fields to allow to users to use the voice to input um, data into forms. And now let's see how these APIs look in practice. 
you first need to instantiate the speech recognition object. And since the APIs are still experimental, they do need the browser prefix for Chrome. Not for Firefox, though. Some of the most relevant configuration attributes for speech recognition are the language one, which allows you to set the language that will be recognized. And Chrome, Google supports 32 of them, including Icelandic, as I found out. Uh, an attribute that allows you to specify if you are interested in um, interim results. So as the speech goes on, you get um, results that might differ. Also the continuous, if the speech should be listening continuously. And finally, the max alternatives, which is something similar to what I showed you with the end best hypothesis. And there are a few event handlers provided for the speech recognition interface. And I would recommend you check the full API at that link there. However, the minimum needed to get you started are the on result, which gets called whenever you have a speech recognition result, on no match, when no match was found for the current speech, and on error, when an error occurred. In terms of controlling the recognizer, we have a pretty self-explanatory API, start and stop. And before we wrap things up, I just want to show you how the speech recognition result format looks like. So this is basically the event that comes into the on result event handler. And it has a few properties. It's final, which says if that's the final result that the recognizer has a high confidence about. The index in the result, so if the speech has multiple results. And then an array of speech recognition results, which contain, again, various properties, but the one you're interested in is the transcript, which tells you what it actually recognized. It also has one that says the confidence, which gives you a confidence score. So this seems quite straightforward. And did anyone notice anything? And I guess you probably already see as a spoiler on the slide. For the past few slides, I was actually not clicking anything to switch between them. I was using speech recognition to talk about speech recognition. And let me just reset this so that you see it happening live. So, as I was saying, come on, you can do it. As I was saying, I was using speech recognition to talk about speech recognition. And how meta is that, right? It's quite cool. And you can see as it types, <laughs> well, it, it likes to make jokes as I talk as well. So the grayed out text is what I was mentioning earlier, the interim results. And now it detected a keyword and it decided to go crazy on me. So the grayed out text was the interim results and start out again. Perfect, here you go. And when it becomes white, that becomes a final result. Exactly, you know it best. <laughs> so you might be wondering, can I use this now? Is, or is it behind those like crazy browser flags and that no user will know how to turn on? when they're using your application. And 
unfortunately, the support is not that great. It's only Chrome and Opera that's supported out of the box. And Firefox with the special web speech recognition flag. And as far as I know, Microsoft is working on adding support for that. And that might be unfortunate, but as we all know, with web APIs, it takes a while until they become the norm and all the browsers implement them. And on that note, I hope you will use this knowledge to build very exciting apps. So thank you very much.